Welcome back to Just Keep Skating, you guys. You know today's legit if the tool belt's going on. Yep, today we are going to be building a flat box. So soon, this pile of lumber is gonna be something awesome to manual. I'm using two by eights because I figure once we add the one inch that three quarter ply and quarter inch skate light adds, we're gonna have an eight inch manual pad, which is a really nice height. Not too high, not too low. And then for the edge, we are gonna use this inch and a half square coping right here. I really like this stuff. I like it better than angle iron. It's pricier, but I think it grinds nicer. It doesn't leave that stupid, jagged, crooked grind mark in your trucks. And overall, it's just more consistent of a grinded slide. So we're gonna be using that. And uh, I'm also making it 10 feet long instead of just eight feet long. Because 10 feet, like by 10 feet, you start to get a nice manual. You know, like when you do a manual on an eight foot box, you don't really know if it's legit or not because like maybe if it was one or two feet longer, you wouldn't have held it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know it's legit if you land it, but you know what I mean. Like if you can hold it that extra couple of feet or longer, you know you're getting a real manual. So that's part of the reason it's gonna be that long. And the other reason is because I wanna be popping on at the beginning of this and grinding the whole thing. And sometimes eight feet just isn't long enough. So that's why we're going with 10 feet, even though it makes the build a little more complicated. You always wanna to check to see if your factory end is nice and square before just relying on it. And in this case, my factory end is very square. So we're gonna just go with that. And you wanna pick an end that doesn't have a lot of splits and doesn't look nasty. So we're keeping this end so that I don't have to do so many cuts. 10 foot two by eights are never actually gonna be 10 feet. So this is like just under 10 and three quarters, which is why we have to cut it and not just rely on it being 10 feet. And a little tip when you're cutting, you can always use gravity to help you like this. Oh. See, this one's only 10 and a half inches, or 10 feet and a half inch. Sorry, metric folk, can't help you here. I know some of you are going, Ben, where's your safety glasses? Well, um, if you wanna protect your eyes, wear them. That's the smart thing to do. Um, I'm just not being smart. <laughs> okay, here's my two outer pieces. <laughs> And now we need to cut some studs. They are going to be 43 inches long. Math, it's not hard. Why am I making it look hard? Okay, each one of these is an inch and a half wide. Two of them is three inches. We're going 48, so we need 45. Simple, 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 simple. 45. All right, you guys, you get the idea. I'm gonna cut all these up, but uh, maybe we don't need to film the whole thing. We'll get back to it once we start assembling. Whoa. That part shouldn't go in the video. <laughs> One thing I forgot to do is count how many I need to cut. So we're gonna go on a 16 inch layout because 16 inches is a nice measurement. It's what we frame at. Why well, think? Okay, come here if you want a little lesson on getting things on center. If we actually want our lumber 16 on center, we're not gonna draw our line right here. We're gonna draw our line right there so that the center of the stud, which is an inch and a half wide, actually lands 16 on center. Should have been that one right there. See what I mean? So you actually have to mark 15 and a quarter. 31 and three quarters. You 
you get the idea. And it's good practice to square over, give yourself a couple marks just to keep it simple. Less guesswork. I could be doing this faster if I was going the other way because I wouldn't be having to move my square backwards, but hey, you win some, you lose some. So that's a simple stud layout right there. Joist, rafter, whatever the heck you want to call this thing. Chunks of 45 inch wood we're going to nail in there. So how many did we need? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You gotta watch out you don't pull a groin like that sometimes, you know? You're not warmed up, you push a heavy pile of lumber, you go, ah! Now I can't skate the beautiful thing I just built. Should have set myself up on some sawhorses, but hey, we're getting it done anyways. Oh, there's that one I kicked apart. So, I'm actually about to film nailing this for my other channel. And yes, screws would be smarter. Yes, it would, but I'm doing a hammer review on the other channel. So, um, yeah, we'll show a little bit of B-roll here for the hammering, but if you really want to see the hammering and the hammer, go to the other channel, Vancouver Carpenter. We'll get my joisty studs all laid out, you know, whatever they are. Ground's uneven there, wants to fall over. The filmer just acknowledged that it's the perfect height box. Now why would I put one that's only like nine inches away there? Well, there's a good reason why I did. Because if you want an even feeling ramp, have an even spacing of framing members. What I mean is if I all of a sudden have a bigger gap in here, there's more likely gonna be a dip right at that one spot where it's missing the framing compared to the even 16 on center framing we have right here. Okay, now it's time for me to get banging this thing together on the old Vancouver Carpenter channel. Whew, air. Let's get the stiletto T-bone and see how that goes. It's definitely, it's a lot lighter. There we go, there's a one, two, three, four. Yeah, it takes an extra hit usually. Anyone that says that this hits like a 28 ounce hammer is full of it. I'm sorry, but it doesn't hit the same as that Vaughn. Okay, I'm back from an absurdly embarrassing stint of filming some videos on my other channel. That's Vancouver Carpenter, if you haven't heard of it. So I just want to plane some of these down because we have a huge lip right here. And obviously the plywood's not gonna sit properly. And that's just sometimes pressure treated lumber isn't always the same dimension. Or maybe the ground was a little uneven. Who knows what it could be. All I know is I wanna get it sorted out.
All right, that's gonna be good enough. And because this thing's been sitting on the shelf, the uh, wire was all kinked and managed to get back underneath the planer. So I planed a little off the cord. You can see the copper in there just a little bit. It's just a little kiss. Just needs a little electrical tape. That will be good for another decade. Okay, you guys, I'm about to show you why it matters to put it on 16 on center. Or at least two foot on center. Because when you're making something longer than eight feet, you want your plywood to land directly in the middle of one of these joisty studs rafters. If this was a floor assembly, these would be joists. So you can see right here, it lands dead center in it. So that way it's not unsupported. That's why we did 16 on center. So the box could very well not be square. And we're gonna start on one side, screw all the way off because the factory edge of the plywood is totally straight. So I'm just gonna get that perfectly lined up. And once I've got this corner right here and this edge totally square, that's when I'm gonna start putting in screws. Got two and a half inch screws here, treated. All this is treated. And I'm gonna follow along this whole edge right now. And it looks pretty darn straight. Right now, I'm just going every 16 where my joists are. Okay, so this could get pulled out a bit. I'm gonna teach you guys a handy dandy little trick. So it's not flush right here. I want it flush. How we're gonna do that is using a little bit of leverage. So I'm using the head of the screw. And I, like even with my whole body weight on this thing, I can easily push it to flush. So now it's totally flush right there. Carpentry and construction is all about, it's about a lot of things, but one of them is learning how to use your tools and get leverage in interesting and different ways. That was one of my favorite things about getting into construction was learning that it wasn't just like boring old, you know, put two by four here, build house, buy crappy products from Home Depot, do nothing original. It's like, no, you actually get to learn all these cool little physics tricks to help get your projects to go together. Because it's not always easy all the time. Sometimes you gotta have these little tricks to help stuff come together. So that's one of my favorite things that I've gotten from construction. All right, now we know this edge is nice and straight. So next we gotta square up this side. As we can see, it needs a lot. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Well, I might actually, is that flush? I might go get my mini sledge over here. The old 23 ounce Vaughn. Let's see if we can't just knock this down a little. Yeah, it's looking better. That's good. I'm just gonna go with that. And I'm keeping my screw back because I need to run a saw along here to cut out for the coping, which I'm not gonna do today. I'm gonna finish getting the plywood on and then return the camera off and skating on this beautiful January day. It's warm, I don't wanna miss it. For the perimeter, about every eight inches is a good measurement. That way when this thing gets repeatedly swollen with water and moves around and stuff, things tend to stay where you put them if you fasten enough of it. If it's every 16 inches, that plywood can swell up. So every eight inches is gonna be a pretty good measurement. All right, you guys, you get the idea. I'm gonna fasten all of this roughly every eight inches apart. All right, you guys, got this cut, and I'm just gonna, I put the cut end against here, and the nice end is right here just because. I don't, I don't want to explain it. <laughs> There's not too much to worry about for this last little bit. Oh, the whole thing got squared up by the first sheet, so we can just go with what's there. But yeah, getting close. Getting closer and closer. The skating! 
I'm gonna show you guys something about plywood. So, this is one of those annoying screws. Let me finish that first. There we go. All right, plywood often has a manufacturing line on it. So come up close where you can really see. So if you could see, there's that line there. Okay, right here, you can see a factory line. There's factory lines here. Sometimes, if you wanna find a stud without drawing a line like this, look for a factory line. So I know that there's one about an inch away right here. And so now with every one of these, I'm gonna go about an inch away from that factory line because those lines are always square with the sheets. And especially when you're using a nail gun and putting like a floor system together, that's when you really, that's when that stuff can really benefit you. You can see I didn't miss for the whole thing because I just eyeballed it away from one of these lines. Works well. Anyways, that's it for today. It's not it for the video, but it's it for today because we got to get skating. Um, yeah. All right, you guys. Next up, we have the skate light. And I'm making sure to stagger the joint between the skate light and the plywood. That way we don't get a raised lip where two pieces meet. So this just bridges it and now it'll be perfect. Once you have your skate light squared up on the end and along the side, it's time to tack it in place. Now you're always gonna have to countersink skate light. I'm gonna put a link in the description to a really good quality countersink. I'm gonna be using two inch screws around the perimeter here so that it really goes into the framing. So once it's tacked in place, you can do your screw layout. I'm gonna go every eight inches around the perimeter and then I'm gonna go every square foot in the field. I will put a link in the description. Oh, oh. <laughs> I hit a nail or a screw. <laughs> you guys, I'm so choked. I just broke my countersink bit. These are good and expensive. Now it's only got one carbide tip and it's not gonna do the job anymore. I found another one, but this one's gonna go really slow because it doesn't have carbide tips. It's smoking and burning already. So on this side, I went roughly two inches in to leave room for the coping. And on this side, I've only gone in about three quarters of an inch to make sure that I'm actually screwing into the framing. So I've decided to go not one foot square, but go on my framing. So every 16 inches and then every one foot in between the framing. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking for the nails on each side and I'm gonna make a quick mark at one foot, two foot, three foot. I'm gonna look for the next ones, same thing. And this is gonna give me a relatively uniform screw pattern because this is a finished product now, right? You wanna make sure that your finished product looks good. So if your screw spacing on your skate light is all messed up, it's just, it's not gonna look good, you know? You may as well take some pride in that. And I'm doing this kind of rough and quick. It's not gonna be a billion percent perfect, but it's gonna be pretty darn good. And again, I'm gonna be using two inch screws. Cause those will have enough bite to actually go into the framing. The reason we want to go into the framing is then the screws are biting more than just three quarter inch plywood. So because the screws are into the framing, they're going to be way less likely to work themselves out over time. Okay, I think you get the general idea about installing the skate light. I just have this one last piece to do, but I'm actually going to film a separate tutorial on working with skate light just with this one little piece.
One thing I should mention is you normally want about a one eighth or a couple mil gap between your skate light. I forgot to do that on this. But because it's just a flat box and it's not gonna be between multiple sheets the way a mini ramp would, it should be okay. The reason for that is you gotta leave room for expansion and contraction of both the lumber and of the skate light itself. I'm not actually sure if skate light expands and contracts, but wood sure does. Okay. The next thing I need to do is cut out for the coping and I'm going to need to stand this up to do it easily along this bottom edge. I mean, it probably could have figured it out before beforehand and just done the notch in the two by eight, but I was rushing that day to try and get it done while I had a filmer there and I didn't want to spend the time to do that. So future Ben is solving that problem. Jeez, oh. more deadlifting again, hey? My back's still feeling it from that last one. That wasn't that bad. <sighs> now that's a bit sketchy. So we should do something to keep it where it is. There's some quick framing here for you guys. all about triangles you guys triangles are strong I'm not gonna knock this triangle over there we go nice and sturdy so my coping is exactly an inch and a half but I don't want it to be completely flush I want it to stick up like a sixteenth so we're gonna go an inch and seven sixteenths, inch and seven sixteenths. And snap it and then double check the measurement along the way. All right, most importantly, let's check the middle. What's it saying there? It's still saying basically one and seven. Like it's one and three eighths plus. So that's close enough that I'm just gonna cut to this line. It'll be good. All right, we need to cut this just over an inch and a quarter deep. We'll do like an inch and five sixteenths. This old saw is getting sticky. Are we there yet? Nope. There we go, right there. A little more, okay. Get that set. None of my nails are in the way, that's good. Saw it set at zero, yeah, we're all good. This is gonna be easier the other way. There we go. Well, I got it flipped back over you guys and maybe you can see that there's a lot more sawdust than there was before. That's because while it was flipped up, I took the opportunity to put the handles in it again that I didn't do at the beginning, which would have been way easier at the start. And I also took the opportunity to plane down a whole bunch of the joists that were sticking up too much because I wanted to make sure that there wasn't gonna be some weird unevenness on this thing and I wasn't gonna have to put shims under it to skate it. Cause when I was walking across it, I could hear it kind of having some unevenness and it wasn't just the ground. So now, when I walk across it, it's solid. I can tell that there isn't, it's not gonna be bouncing when I get to one end of it. So that's good. So because the skate light is quarter inch, we need to go in an inch and a quarter. But if I measure exactly from that, now this isn't lining up exactly. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm actually gonna use my square to kind of plumb up a little. So we're gonna push this against here. Now I can get an exact measurement. And I'm not actually gonna go an inch and a quarter. I'm gonna make it even smaller so it sticks out just a little bit. I'm gonna go an inch and three sixteenths because I want the coping to stick out the tiniest bit rather than be in too far. And I'm gonna check it in about three or four different spots. So one and three small. 
let's see how this is going to look if we run a string across it. It's bang on. I'm going to snap away then. Perfect. Nice and straight. Now I was having a little debate as to whether I should use the track saw or the skill saw. Track saw would be nice and straight. I'd love to use it, but it's a little more finicky to set the depth exactly right because it's hard to account for the track. And I'm feeling impatient and I don't have a track long enough to do 10 feet. I can only do about nine feet. There we are, coping time. Okay, la coping. Getting closer, every little bit. Oh, all right, next you need a high speed drill bit that's just big enough for the head of the screw. And a whole lot of patience. If it's pretty sharp, it'll go through pretty quick like that. If it's dull, it's gonna take you a long time. And just for consistency, let's measure these out and space them out nicely. What would thirds of 10 feet be? It'd be like three foot three inches, something like that, hey? Three foot three inches, six foot six inches. Yeah, there we go. Four screws should be enough to hold this in place. Next, you need a drill bit just big enough for the shank of the screw. And then you'll need a screw. And in my opinion, an inch and a half screw is long enough in this case. I don't want to split the wood. So that's looking pretty good right about there. Okay, now last but definitely not least, we need some rips for the slides. And if I put them all at three and three quarters, I can get enough pieces out of this. That's a close guess. This one's about one mil smaller. All right, now I'm not gonna fuss too much about this stuff, I'm just gonna get it done. Oh, my measurements. They were off, you guys. It's not cut in deep enough. I'm just gonna live with it for now. If I decide that I really don't like it, you know what? I'll just cut it again. It wasn't that hard. Okay, you guys don't need to see me do all this. Let's just get to some skating soon enough. You guys, it's done. I'm not a billion percent happy with how the coping turned out, but I'm also willing to just wax this thing up, skate it, and see if I end up deciding that it's not so bad after all. So um, let's get a few sessions on this thing, and then we'll come back and re-examine how it looks and what I would do differently. Whew, yeah, I got a lot of cleanup to do, and my back is aching today.
Well, you guys, this thing is really fun. And yes, the coping does stick up more than I planned and a little out more on the edge than I planned. One of these days, I'm gonna cut it again and make it more close to flush, but you know what? At least it wasn't too far in. As for how it manuals and grinds and all that stuff, it's amazing. It's awesome. Absolutely love this thing. It's been really nice to have something I can do manuals on again. I haven't been doing a lot of them since the meniscus injury, so um, I was definitely pretty rusty on them at first. As for the height, honestly, at eight inches, it's not an ideal like learn lots of new manual tricks thing. What it is ideal for is something to do a lot of tricks on like a lower ledge, tall curb sort of thing. So that's what it's absolutely ideal for. I'm definitely glad I built it at 10 feet because getting that extra grind, like even though it's pretty low, I can still jump onto a crooked grind on this thing and take it right to the end. The backside nose grinds are really fun, but it's not too long to the point that it's like a real challenge to hold it. It's just enough to make it more satisfying than eight feet. Cause eight feet can be a little too short for a ledge. You feel like you're always coming off the ledge as soon as you got onto it. The coping is so smooth. It's so much faster than angle iron. I really like this stuff. Um, it's a lot more expensive. It was like 10 bucks a foot, something like that. It cost me, no, it was 12 bucks a foot. It cost me $120 and then plus tax on top of that. So it's definitely more expensive than angle iron, but in my opinion, it's nicer. Although getting that coarse angle iron grind can feel pretty good sometimes too. But like I mentioned earlier in the video, I do hate that like super aggressive angle iron crooked grind mark that just tears through your truck but doesn't grind any other spot. I like a nice rounded over crooked grind mark from a nice round chunky ledge. That's the best. Anyways, I don't really know what I even have to say. I, I think I probably thought I had a bunch of things to say at the end of this video. I don't. Actually, there is one thing. I'm starting my Patreon account again. It's Ben to Grow, so same as my other channel because I've been shelling out a lot on these builds. So, you know, if anybody wants to help out with that, you can go check out the Patreon. I appreciate it if any of you guys are interested. I'm also going to be putting out maybe monthly off-topic content. So like totally random stuff on there. So you're not gonna be getting nothing. Like there'll be something different on there that I'm not putting on any of the other channels. Anyways, now I'm done. Now I'm really all done. I hope you guys are doing awesome. Um, I'm doing well. Don't forget to, I don't know, just keep skating. I don't, have, I don't know what to say at the end of these videos. Maybe I still feel like talking. I don't know. No, I don't. I'm done. See you guys. Have a good one.